I just want to take a moment to talk about our three other meetings that we have every week. There's a core of people that have been coming to our meetings that have the time and the ability to participate in our three meetings per week. Some can only make one, some can make two, some can make all three. But what you experience here today and what you experience here in our church services is also experienced during our weekly meetings. And I see so much growth and I hear so much growth among those. If, if God is calling you to attend our meetings, don't hesitate. Please come. Because the Spirit of God is teaching us all. Uh, the Tuesday night prayer meeting was just incredible. I never heard so many saints assembled together in one spot pray with such beautiful hearts for the will of God and then to witness and to experience and to see answered prayers. It's amazing. And God is honoring our church in the discipleship meeting on Wednesday night. It's not about coming and being discipled. Well, I guess it is. But primarily, you know what Matthew 28 18, 19, and 20 says. If you don't know that, it's called the Great Commission. And we're commissioned to go out into all the world to make disciples, teaching them all to obey that what the Lord has commanded us in his word. And so the discipleship meeting is about practice. We're a bunch of disciples assembled together and one disciple gets an opportunity to teach us according to the Word of God and to practice on his brothers and sisters so when the time comes, we'll have experience discipling men and women of God. Amen? And Thursday night, the Bible study. We cover maybe, what, you guys, three to four or five verses a, a night? But what we do is... We break down each and every verse, and we're allowed to allow it to apply to our lives, to teach us and to guide us what the Lord is saying to us via the Holy Spirit, and there's much growth going on there as well. We take each and every verse, and we wring it out. Have you ever had a wash rag in your sink? It's been damped. You can pick it up, you can fold it, and you can wring it. You can always get water out of it. That's what we do with the Word of God. And it's amazing, the growth that I see happening and the faithfulness of the saints coming and gathering together. So I'm saying this just to let you know that somewhere inside you, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and say, you need to come. You are welcome. And we're very, very blessed because Cheryl, raise your hand. She's known as the cookie lady. Every meeting, she brings us cookies, and they're good. And we have coffee, too. And it's a great time in the Lord, so you all are welcome and invited to come. Are you ready to hear some word? Okay. Have you been called by God? The word of God says many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. So we're going to talk about answering the call. That's why, why, why did I put it under raise the bar? Because a lot, lot of us can have a call upon our lives and not answer it because that means you might have to give up something and so it's easier to let the phone ring and not pick it up and answer it 
and find out what the Lord is saying or wants to say for you to do with your life of service. You know, dwelling in the kingdom of God and being a Christian isn't just sitting in a pew. I'm so happy you're here and that you're hearing the word of God, but there's more to it. Do you know that God wants to use you? Amen. He wants to use you. And many of us know that. But sometimes I'm scratching my head and I'm thinking, I know you want to use me, but what do you want to use me for? I don't know. But I got this unction inside of me that I know I need to be doing more for the kingdom of God. Where do I go? What do I do? So when you're saying that to you, are you just making excuses? Or are you really confused or unsure? It's a question for, for all of us to ask ourselves internally. Are you hearing God's voice or are you hearing a voice but it's not God's? Maybe it's your own. Maybe it's coming out of your head that's telling you something that you shouldn't be telling yourself and it's denying you the opportunity to fulfill the call that God has called you to do. Now, when, and the reason I brought up about the frown on my face is because I want to share with you. Many, many years, from 2002 to 2019, I loved God, and I confessed I wanted to serve God. But he had a calling on my life that I was ignoring. Well, I can't say I was ignoring it. I just say I was confused. And I didn't have any clarity. And so, 02 to 2019, that's what, 17 years. I was stuck with this unction that God wanted me to do more. But I didn't know what it was. But I did know but it's too big. So here I am, pastoring the Redwood Church of God. Hallelujah. And also being a president over Redwood Ministries, which is a housing ministry, providing housing for those who might need it. That's a call. That's a call in my life. Amen. And I was stuck in a place where I thought I was going to be all of my life. But God allowed circumstances to develop that moved me to where I could hear his voice clearly and know what to do. It also helped to have a brother remind me of some things. Amen. So does, does your cell phone look like that? Is God calling you? Isn't that kind of clever, uh, Michael? I don't know where Michael is, but he told me before about moving the logo around. So I put the logo right on the phone, and I put the logo under the word God, the O. So believe it or not, I'm going back to the Old Testament. Yeah, you don't normally hear me go to the Old Testament. So... So some of you Old Testament buffs, you'll like this. Uh, Brother Miles, yes, what's Pastor. the weather like today? A weather Center forecast for the Redwood Church of God. Look for the sun to be in the hearts of believers. It may be a scorcher outside, but it is cool and breezy with the Lord. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. I'm glad I'm with the Lord. So... So believe it or not, there's a book in the Bible. It's called Haggai. Yeah. I know it might be a surprise to some of you. Um, but we're going to start there. Go ahead, brother. Haggai 1.1. 1, 1. In the second year of Darius, the king of Persia, on the first day of the sixth month, August 29, 520 B.C., the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, 
the son of Zahuzadak, the high priest, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not come that the Lord's house, temple, should be rebuilt. Were they hearing from the Lord? Nope. No. But they're telling everybody they're hearing from the Lord. How many times have you spoken what the Lord said? But it's really your own mind and your own desires that's speaking. And God hasn't said a word to you. Come on. These people say. Go ahead. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, it is time for you yourselves to live in your expensive paneled houses while this house of the Lord lies in ruins. I can't do that, Lord. That's really going to cost me. Even though you're calling me, you can't mean that. I, 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 love, I love what I got, God. I don't want to give it up. As a matter of fact, why don't you bless me and give me more? You want me to do what? That must be my brain telling me. It's not you, Lord, because you wouldn't ever, ever ask me to sacrifice like that. These people say. Really. Stop quoting what the Lord has told you and have that conversation with the Lord. Unless you're a prophet. And then the word is for all the people. Did you hear Sister Lori today? Yes. You know, I've been teaching the last two weeks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. She had no idea what my scriptures were going to be today, but in her prophetic word, the Lord encouraged me on presenting this message because the message was given to me at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And she confirmed it. That's right. That's the way God works. That's how you know God is speaking to you. Is it, is it confirmed? Do you find it in the word of God? Is it confirmed or is it, does it come out of the mouth of two or three witnesses? Okay, go ahead, brother. Finish reading. Verse 5. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct. Consider your ways. Do you stop and do that? Do you stop and consider your ways and, can, and uh, evaluate your conduct? Go ahead, brother. We're good. Haggai 1.5. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct. You have planted much, but you harvest little. Really? You eat. But really, you did you see enough. that, church? You've planted much, but you harvest little. Does that sound like some of the work that you're doing? Mm. Come on. You eat, but you do not have enough. Are you still hungry? Are you still wanting more? Are you fulfilled from what the Lord has given you to do? Maybe what you're claiming the Lord has given you to do isn't the Lord at all. Maybe it's you saying this is what the Lord has given me to do. And you ain't heard diddly squat from the Lord, but you're claiming it. That's what these people were saying. Well, we're not supposed to rebuild the house. But the Lord is saying, yes, you are. They rather have comfort in their fine paneled homes than take care of the accommodations of the house of the Lord. They were thinking of themselves first before the Lord. Go ahead, brother. But you do not have enough to be intoxicated. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm enough. And he who earns wages earns them just to put them in a bag with holes in it because the God has withheld his blessing. Because God has withheld his blessing. Okay. Why? Why is God withholding their blessing? Continue on. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct. Go up to the hill country, bring lumber, and rebuild my house, temple. But Lord, I'm tired. 
I wanted to go home and watch TV. I don't want to go out to the street corner. I don't want to go talk to the clerk at the grocery store. I'm tired. Go ahead. Rebuild my house, temple, that I may be pleased with it and be glorified, says the Lord, accepting it has done for my glory. You look for much harvest, but it comes to little. But Lord, why aren't, why aren't I being blessed? And even when you bring that home, I blow it away. Why? I know I should be doing more, Lord, but I can't even hang on to what I got. Why, says the Lord of hosts? Because of my house, which lies in ruins. The house of God is lying in ruins. There's people's lives that are out there lying in ruins that need to hear the hope of glory. Or there's Bible studies or prayer meetings or different things for you to come to and get together and assemble with the saints of God. Because, I'm not mad. I'm just passionate right now. Go ahead. Because my house, which lies in ruins, while each of you runs to his own house, eager to enjoy it. Therefore, because of you, that is your sin and disobedience. Because of what? Your sin and disobedience. Isn't that interesting? He separates sin from obedience or disobedience. He's saying both of them because of your sin and your disobedience, which is sin. The but some of us are hard-headed, and we re we're like a mule. No matter what you say, Lord, I'm going to do what I want. And you wonder why you're not being blessed. Because the Lord is talking to you, but you're not listening. The word can come out of the pulpit, out of the word of God, and speak right to your heart and walk out the door and forget all about it. Okay, go ahead, brother. Backing up. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house which lies in ruins, while each of you run to his own house eager to enjoy it. Therefore, because of you, that is, your sin and disobedience, therefore, because of you, that is, your sin and disobedience, the heavens withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its produce. Okay, we're going to go to the New Testament. Do you guys know what a parable is? A story. Why? What's the purpose of the story? What's the Teaching. purpose of a parable? Teaching. Yeah. Teaching. We're going to find out more why Jesus used parables. Here it is, the purpose of parables. Matthew thirteen ten. Then the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the crowd in parables? Jesus replied to him, To, do, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom Who's of heaven. Who's he speaking to? The disciples. He's speaking to us. To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It's been granted to you to know. You but have the Holy Spirit of God living within you. Do you think not that you cannot hear that spirit? Come on. When the ones that do not have it cannot hear it? Continue. But to them it has not been granted. For whoever has spiritual wisdom, because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given, and he will richly and abundantly be supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom, because he has devalued God's word. Do you value the word of God? I sure hope so. Even what he has will be taken away from him. 
For this reason, I speak to the crowds in parables, because while having the power of seeing, they do not see, and while having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, Okay, did any of you ever read the Bible before you were saved? I did. I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. I didn't know what it was saying. I was reading the words, but I couldn't put it together, and I'd close it up and put it away. But do you see that? Having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things. That's why, as Christians, as born-again believers, you have that power. Amen. You have ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. And that's why the Lord talks to us in parables. So we can understand what he's trying to say to us. Amen? Amen. The, prof the prophecy of Isaiah. Here it is. You will hear and keep on hearing, but never understand. And you will look and keep on looking, but never comprehend. Matthew thirteen fifteen, For this nation's heart has grown hard, and with their ears they hardly hear, and they have tightly closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, and they would hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn to me, and I would heal them spiritually. So what did it say back here about the prophecy of Isaiah? In them, the prophecy what, what, of Isaiah. What verse are you reading on, please? Uh, the very last one, 14. Okay, listen to this. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. Do you know when the book of Isaiah was written? A long time ago. Way before Christ ever arrived. And this nation's heart has grown hard. Who's he talking about? Us. He's talking about Israel. Jesus came into his own, and the own, his own received him not. It's a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. They heard his words, but they did not hear. But that's not the case of you. You are not the nation of Israel. You are the Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. Matthew 13, 16, but blessed, spiritually aware, and favored by God are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, many prophets and righteous men who were honorable and in right standing with God long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The purpose of parables. How many have heard of the marriage of the Lamb? The marriage supper. Okay, we're going to talk about that right now. Revelation 19.6. Then I heard something like the shout of a vast multitude and like the boom of many pounding waves, and like the roar of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Let us give Him glory and honor, for the marriage of the Lamb has come at last, and His bride the redeemed has prepared herself. She has been permitted to dress in fine linen. Permitted to dress in what? Fine linen. Okay. Dazzling white and clean. Who, who are the redeemed? The church. Who is his bride? The church. So he's talking about you. Revelation 19. Okay, this is, in my opinion, there's some debate that this is, occurs directly after the rapture. But you notice the saints are dressed for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? 
Amen. They're dressed in what? Fine linen. Okay. Dazzling white and clean. Dazzling white and clean. For the fine linen signifies the righteous acts of the saints, the ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character of believers. Do you see that? The ethical conduct? Do you see that, church? The personal integrity? What have I been preaching for the last two years? Godly character. It's going to count. What's going on inside you and in your inner man, it counts. The ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage. Can you stand up for what's right? Do you have the courage to do that? And Does God. your character allow you to make good decisions? 19.9. Then the angel said to me, Write, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you have to have an invitation? Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper so of the So you need Lamb. an invitation to attend the supper. And he said to me, further, these are the true and exact words of God. Then I fell down to hi at his feet to worship him, but he stopped me, and he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who have and hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God alone, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. His life and teaching are the heart of prophecy. Amen. Matthew 22. So here's, here's a, a parable. Parable of the wedding feast. So Jesus. remember what we have covered so far, because it's all leading up to this. Go ahead. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. Who would be doing that? Father in heaven for Jesus. His son would be who? That's right. Have you heard of that? Come on. Did we just not carry this, cover this? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is what he's referring to. Go ahead. Verse 3, And he sent his servants to call those who had previously been invited to the wedding feast, but they refused to come. Then he sent out some other servants, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted calves are butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. Okay, wait a minute. He's prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calves are butchered, and everything is ready. Does it sound like you went to a lot of effort? Oh, yeah. It sure does to me, too. Have you ever put on a big party? Yep. A big dinner party, have you ever had it go and no one shows up? Mm-hmm. After all of this preparation? What a disappointment. Verse 5. I, but I, I don't, I, I don't want to slam the nation of Israel. Please don't take me wrong. But remember, Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And they rejected him. They refused to come to the dinner, even though they were invited. Go ahead. Verse 5. But they paid no attention. They disregarded the invitation, treating it with contempt, and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest of the invited guests seized his servants and mistreated them. What? Insult, yeah, they seized the servants and mistreated them, insulting and humiliating them, and killed them. Are you serious? That's what it says. And killed them. The king was enraged. When he heard this, 
and he sent his soldiers and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. That's the, the city of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go to the main highways that lead out of the city and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. That means Gentiles? Yep. Right. To those servants went out to the streets and gathered together all the people they could find, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests sitting at the banquet table. How wonderful. But when the king came in to see this, this is Matthew. That was was oh still. I'm sorry. This is still the same. Matthew chapter. 22 verse yeah. 11. Go ahead. But when the king came in to see the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed appropriately in wedding clothes. Who were according to Revelation, the righteous what are the saints dressed in the righteous acts of the saints. They were dressed in white that. linen, dazzling and clean. Amen. Amen. Okay, so go ahead was not dressed appropriately in wedding clothes. And he said, friend, how did you come in here without wearing the wedding clothes that were provided for you? And the man was speechless and without excuse. Then the king said to the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him into the darkness outside in a place where there will be weeping over sorrow and pain, and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. For as many are called, invited, summoned, but few are chosen. There's your answer. Many are invited, but only a few are chosen. Only a few accept the invitation. His, and so... This is a story of salvation, and that's not where I'm going. What does that have to do with answering the call? Because I'm supposing all of you are saved. Amen. But you know the Word of God can teach us principles and symbols? And I'm using this parable to talk to you about the calling as a Christian. Already been born, already saved, but are warming a pew and feel like God is telling you to do more. That's what the message is about, not about whether you're saved or not. This is the next level. Really? You know, I feel like, personally, I'm right in the midst of my calling. Amen. I'm exactly where God has called me to be Thank you, Jesus. at this time in my life. I don't feel like I should be doing anything other than what I'm doing now. Amen. I have assurance of that. And as Jason said, no, I don't have a frown. I'm fulfilled. I'm happy. My inward man is full because I'm doing what God created me to do. That's right. And there's no greater feeling or experience than walking in the calling of God and what he's asked you to do. Amen. And what this message is about for you all. So you can think with me, gather together, yes, the courage to step up and do what the Lord is asking you to do. Not to ignore his call, but to answer it. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor James? Here we go. So w this is the same parable, but it's in Luke. The other, the, this parable was in Matthew. This is how Luke records it. Luke 14, 16. But Jesus said to him, a man was giving a big dinner. A what kind of dinner? A big dinner. A big dinner. And he invited many guests. How many guests? Many, many. guests. And at the dinner hour... He sent his servants to tell those Okay, is God speaking to you? He sent his servants. Is this the dinner hour? Yep. Come on, church. We know the signs. 
We see what's going on around us. We know what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Is this the dinner hour? Yep. Let it speak to you. He sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, come, because everything is ready now. Everything is ready when? Now. Now. But they all alike began Uh-oh. to make excuses. Uh-oh. Pay attention, church. But they Are you making excuses as to why you're not fulfilling what God has called you to do? Mm. This is the symbol, this is the meaning behind this parable to us. Are you making excuses? I hear a lot of them. I hear a lot of them coming out of your mouths. And I'm going to speak to you this way because I love you. Amen. And I want the best for you. Amen. But I can't sit idly by as a pastor and listen to excuses. Especially when you know there's work to do. And I know what God's doing. I know he's calling you. He's asking you to step out, but you want to make an excuse not to. Really? Here's the word. Go ahead. Verse 18, but they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have purchased a piece of land, and I have to go out and see it. Please excuse me. Another one said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to go try them out. Please consider me excused. And another said, I have recently married a wife. And for that reason, I'm Okay, I can understand that one. (laughs) So all of them are invalid except that one. (laughs) Well, another said, I have recently married a wife, and for that reason I'm able to come. So the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then his master, the head of the household, became angry at the rejections of his invitation. And he said to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the disabled and the blind and the lame. Hallelujah. Brian, stand up. Give him a hand. For hearing the voice of God and doing it. God bless you, brother. Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the Go city. Go out how fast? Quickly. Into okay. The- that means impulsively. Don't sit there and think about it and make excuses. Just go. Go ahead. Quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the disabled. Bring them where? Here. To, to give them the gospel and then leave them alone? No. No. To bring them in. To bring them in, Bill. To bring them in. Stan, bring, bring them in. It's, it's good to give them the gospel and lead them to Christ. I'm not diminishing that. But the word of Jesus says to bring them in. Bring them in. Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the disabled and the blind and the lame. Luke 20, 14, 22. And the servant, after returning, said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done. And there's still room. There's still room. And there's still room. Then the master. Does Jesus have a limit? Nope. Do we have a limit? No. Do people have a limit? No. You know, that's the business we're in. If you're a Christian, you're in the people business. Amen. Go ahead. Then the master told the servant, go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in. That word compel is a very strong word. And, and I, I broke it down. It's like I was looking at this Greek word, nagazo. Do you notice right in the middle? There's that those three letters, nag. That's how I remember it. Go nag them into the, into the kingdom. You know, don't leave them alone. Nag on them. It's uh, to compel in a moral sense. Your moral sense. I know I'm doing what God has asked me to do, and I know it's of God, and I know it's the right thing to do. And I love these people, and I love God. 
That's my moral character. Go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled with guests. For I tell you, not one of those who were invited and declined will taste my dinner. You hear that? That's the word of God. None of those who were invited. I've given you the invitation. Have you committed them part of sin and declined? So I don't need you, God. That means if I got you, I have to give up all of this. I like this more than I like you. So I'm sorry. I'm going to decline. We're busy. I have an excuse. I got me a wife. I got to take care of her. I don't got time for you, God. That's what you're saying when you make excuses, whether you know it or not. You can look, look and listen to your own psychological babble and deceive yourself, but the truth never changes. You have to examine yourself, as is said in, in Haggai, to consider everything. Evaluate yourself. See yourself for what you are. Are you making excuses? Because it's going to come out. When? When you're standing before the Lord. He's going to play back them excuses to you, and you're going to say to yourself, oh, my God, I was so deceived. Look at that warehouse that he had for me. Warehouse of rewards, if I only would have obeyed his voice. Come on. And uh, I was telling myself I couldn't hear his voice. Yes, you can. The Word of God will talk to you. That's right. Don't. I'm not going to go there again. Okay. Now listen to this. I'm going to pull Matthew 25 on you. Matthew 25, 31. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and majesty and with all the angels with him, then... He will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. How many nations? All the nations. That's everybody. Everyone that had not been already raptured. But you know, this is at the end of the millennium. Go ahead. All the nations will be gathered before him for judgment. And he will separate them. Gathered before him for what? For judgment. Okay. And he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. So what are you going to do if you find yourself in the mess of goats? And he will put the sheep on his right, the place of honor, and the goats... On his left, the place of rejection. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you so, blessed. Well, just a minute. So, again, this is talking about salvation. I'm not talking about that for you all. A place of honor? On his right. Oh, okay, well, just a moment. I'm not asking for commentary right now, please. Thank you. On his right is a place of honor. Do you know... When you do the will of God and answer the call of God and do the things that he set before you, it's going to be a place of honor. You're going to get a crown. And there's, what are you going to do when you, when you jump through that fire and your works are judged and you come out all scorched and black and nothing left? Yeah, you're in, but you have nothing to show because the hay, stubble, and straw has been burned up. There's no precious jewels, gold, or silver. Because you didn't do, you didn't answer the call of God. Don't tell me you didn't get a call because I know you have. How do I know that? By the word of God. I know that he wants to use you all. Each one of us has a job to do. Don't minimize it and don't ignore it. And don't make excuses anymore. Okay, brother, now you can read. He will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. 
He will put the sheep on his right, the place of honor, and the goats on his left, the place of rejection. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Pay attention. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison, and you came to me, ignoring personal danger. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, uh, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, to the extent that you did it for the one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. Even the what? The least of them. It doesn't matter what you think. Don't classify people. Don't judge them. Do the work the Lord has given you to do. Amen. Because you know what? According to the word of God, when you even minister to the least of them, you're ministering to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves everyone. So, Michael, you like where that logo is? <laughs> That's just for you, brother. <laughs> so my question is, you know that the subject of the first of the year has been raise the bar. And I love you all so very much. And it's with love that's in my heart and compassion in my heart that I'm speaking to you because I want you to fulfill the calling that God has on your life. Amen. And I want you to understand the difference. You have planted much, but you harvest little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you can't even get drunk. You clothe yourself, but no one is ever warm enough. And he who earns wages earns them just to put them in a bag with holes. I can't hang on to my money. I can't hang on to my finances. Where's the blessing, Lord? Because God has withheld his blessing. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Here it is. Consider, Consider your ways. Don't listen to me up here and then walk away. Remember this word. Consider your ways. What does that mean? What are you doing and what are you not doing? What is God asking you to do and what are you saying? What are your ways? Now, I know there's some of you in here that I'm very, very proud of. Why am I proud of them? Because I know you're doing exactly what the Lord has asked you to do. And it's evidenced by your life. Your life is blessed. Amen. Um, I've seen families restored. Amen. I've seen marriages restored. Amen. I've seen children restored. Amen. That's not who this verse is talking to. They are experiencing the blessings of the Lord. Listen, everyone, God is good. Amen. 
He is so good and so loving. He wants you to experience his blessings, but he also wants you to know why some of his blessings aren't coming your way. Consider your ways. That's all God's saying. No one's beating you up with a stick now. I'm provoking you to move in such a way that you consider your ways. That's, that's what the Lord is asking us right now, is to consider your ways and change where they need to be changed. I was stuck at a spot for, what did I say, 17 years and I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Why? Because I didn't consider my ways. But God moved me. I had no choice. Finally, it was like the light bulb coming on. Ding. Oh, okay, I get it now, Lord. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get it before, but now I see. Why? Because he led me through my circumstances to get me where he wanted me to go. That's my prayer for you all. So my question is, are you all in? I don't hear any answers. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I, I believe you. And so with that, I'm going to, um, I got some time. Is there anyone that wants prayer to help consider their ways? Amen. The, the the prayer line's open. I will anoint you and pray over you if you like to come forward. I do have time. Amen. 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 Lord, we heard your word. We're responding to your word. Praise the Lord. I wish I could get up in this line. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't do it because I have a wife at home. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Father God, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, and we lift up these saints. We let the anointing and proclaim the anointing of the Holy Spirit just to drop right now. Fill your people with your spirit. If they come, come forward with an honest heart, they want to know. They want to know. You know, brothers and sisters, when I was preaching, I thought it came to me and I didn't get a chance to say it. You know Matthew 25. How in the world can you say you have a relationship with God when he says, get away from me, I never knew you? If you know God, you'll hear his voice. He'll talk to you in the word. You'll hear him. And he will do things in your life he will pour out those blessings upon you. Christianity is not a religion. This is not, this is not a ritual we're doing. This is a relationship is what we're doing. If you're not a relationship, you can't hear his voice. You hear your own or that of the enemy. So as I come to you and pray over you, I'd ask you to put out one of your hands and hold the microphone for me. So, Lord, I lift up my sister to you. What a beautiful, beautiful heart she's got. Thank you for bringing her here, Lord God. Thank you for letting her hear this message today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you, Holy Spirit, just to put a blessing upon her right now. Let her clearly hear your voice and continue to use her in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, bring her peace. And uh, the praise worship leader.
Thank you, Lord, for Brother Michael. We lift him up in the mighty name of Jesus. And in his busy life, and all of the things he's doing, right there in the midst of it, I pray for him, for your fresh anointing upon him, that he would stop and say, Jesus, is that you? I can hear you. I got ears to hear. Thank you, Lord. I've been waiting so long. Bless him, God. Bless him right now. Fill him up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Uh, my brother James. I lift my brother up before you. God says you're loyal. You need to you need to focus on him and take your worldly loyalty and give it all to him, all of it. And you will hear his voice. He will stop you in your tracks. He will grab you by the shoulder and you will know that you know that the God Almighty has spoken to you if you continue to pursue him as he's preeminent, number one, above everything. I'm going to anoint you right now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Sister Amanda, I anoint you right now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, daughter, the Lord says, I know your troubles. I know your struggles. You have made some good choices. Continue to seek me and obey me. And I will bring all these things to pass. I will restore your family. I will bless your marriage. I will bring you unspeakable joy and fulfillment when you obey my word. I love your heart. It's a good heart. You have much love to give. Don't hold it back. Share it. For it is your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I know in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I pray for my brother Ryan. I lift him up. I ask you to consider him fully. I pray for him. He's a key player in the kingdom of God. He's a young Timothy in the name of Jesus. He has a passion for you. I ask you, Lord, to help him channel and focus and direct that passion according to the will of God and the things that you've asked him to do. I pray, Lord, that he hears your voice excruciatingly loud, that he has to plug his ears and he will be in amazement and say, that was God. I heard you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for instructing me. I will do all that you have asked me to do. I'm all in for your glory. Bless his life, God. Bless his mother. Bless his brothers and his sisters in Christ. And I uh, thank you for, the, the, for his obedience today. And according to your word, he's doing what you have asked him to do. But he wants more. And there's more for him to do. And I ask you, Lord, to lead him and guide him and direct him and speak to him. Let him see you at work. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My brother Daniel. Daniel, you're awesome. 
and you're loved despite what the enemy says to you. You have many, many desirable attributes of God that attract people. And I'm here to pray for you. And I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I lift up my brother to you, Lord, to give him peace. Peace in his heart. Peace in his mind. Let him go forth. I ask you, Lord, to bring more and more people into his life. The ones that um, your word says evil company corrupts good character. So I ask you, Lord, just to bring those men and women of God into his life. And they would draw close to him. And he would be able to glean people that would be examples uh, physical examples, and he would see you in them and know that he knows that this person is who I'm supposed to hang out with and to be a blessing to. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you. I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Listen to my brother Miles. Every church needs a brother Miles. We love him, and I lift him up before you. He struggles like we all struggle. I ask you, Lord, to bless him. Give him clarity of mind, clarity of spirit. Give him the words, the right words. Your words, let them be spoken and continue to use him and may he always keep you first before a person, place, or thing or desire. I ask you just to, to anoint him right now, anoint him with the desires of God and only God. We crucify the flesh right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I lift up Deaconess Karen to you. I don't know why she's up in this line, but I'm going to know you right now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Karen is loved by so many. She's a testimony to your love. But she's a, she's a human being, just like all of us. And she struggles in areas. But I ask you, Lord, to show her where her struggle is not. And that she would remain focused on the things that you are bringing to her. And that she could hear your voice and not be confused. And that you would give her the power and the strength to be obedient. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Good job. Are you comfy? You're trying? Okay. I'll take I'll pray for you right now then. I got it. So Lord, I lift up Melody right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I know you hear in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, you're doing a mighty work in her heart. Those who know Melody know this to be true. She knows it. She has been awakened in the mighty name of Jesus. You are speaking to her. Let her not be confused. Let her rightly divide the word of truth and that uh, she would grow into um, a stronger woman of God and that she would have complete understanding of your word. And I ask you, Lord, let your blessings continue to be poured out in her life and uh, let her continue to um, understand your will in Jesus name she might think that I have nothing to do but oh she's wrong she's got a full agenda and that you will be showing her those things Lord God and that you will bless her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray amen so Lord I, I lift up Sarah to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and I Anoint her in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody loves Sarah. She's a good woman of God. She loves you. 
with a passion. You brought her so far and have delivered her from so much, and she wants to be put to work. She wants to expand your kingdom. She wants to be used by you. She wants to be fulfilled by you. She needs to hear your voice. She needs to see, and she needs to have ears that hear. And I ask you, Lord, to bring her that assurance in the mighty name of Jesus and continue to use her and that you would go before her and uh, the secret desires of her heart, the things that only you and her know about, I pray, Lord, that you would honor her and bring them to pass right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So, Lord, I lift up glory to you, and I anoint her right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here's another woman of God. Everybody loves Lori. And uh, she so faithfully and consistently seeks your face. And you are using her, but she wants to be used more. I ask you, Lord, to speak to her. Scream at her, God. Let her know exactly what your word is. Let her, let her hear your word crisp and clear. And Lord, anything else in the background, we come against it right now in the mighty name of Jesus and we drown it out and it has no place in her life right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for using her to bring a word of God to the people of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Elder Jason, I, anoint, I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God has brought you so far, brother, and I just want to praise you, Father, for the fine work that you're doing in this brother. And he has power. He probably doesn't even realize it, or maybe he's got a taste of it. But his power is um, influencing people for the cause of Christ. He has a way of sharing himself and the love of God to others. I ask you, Lord, to direct him and use him more. And we'd all love to hear and see Jason smile and laugh. <laughs> and, uh, Lord, we love him. He's so loyal to us. And I ask you, Lord, to give him wisdom beyond his means and that uh, he would find much favor in your sight and let your grace Go before him. Uh, the wisdom that you're giving him is good, Lord, and we ask you that you give him more. In the name of Jesus, let him have peace in his heart, clarity in his mind, and purpose in his steps. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, everybody. God's never early. He's never late. He's always right on time. And it's time to eat. <laughs> so um, I love you all so very much. You are such a beautiful church. And now I know why God loves you all so much and why he's blessing you all. So, Father, I, I lift up this message to you. I thank you for it. Thank you for your people. I uh, pray over the meal that it would go to the nourishment of our bodies to give us strength and energy to do your will. And uh, that you're well pleased with our behaviors and our conversations as we continue to fellowship in your name. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>